Okay, this is the second part of my um, series on X-ray production at home using a vintage rectifier tube 2X2A, which I have set up here. I've now connected it correctly. So the cap is positive and the thin filament in the middle of the cap is negative. So let me explain to you how I believe the vacuum tube produces X-rays. So the vacuum tube has a cup-shaped electro, um, electrode in the top part of the tube, and it has a filament electrode that sits right in the middle of the tube like that. And then here's the glass enclosure of the vacuum tube like this. And so if I make the thin electrode, which is this one, the filament electrode, if I make that one negative, and then I make the, the, the top part, the cap of the tube positive, you get a very strong potential difference. If I put, say, 20 kilovolts, um, I'm gonna draw this upside down, so mind my drawing. So if you put 20 kilovolts there, you can have a very high electric field here. And this thin electrode, which is, which is negative, you're gonna have a very, very high electric field. And electrons will literally boil off this electrode and they'll shoot towards so his electrons boiling off in all directions and hitting this metal cap and as they accelerate they gain energy in this complete vacuum that's inside this tube and the energy is going to be equivalent to 20 kilo electron volts so you're going to have 20 kilo of electron volts of energy in the electron and then suddenly it's going to come to a dead stop when it hits the metal and what happens is you get what's called bremsstrahlung um, rays produced and bremsstrahlung is x-rays and those have enough energy to penetrate the glass wall of the tube so <clears throat> the most strongest production of bremsstrahlung is approximately at that angle so if you place um, a plate either here or here, you're gonna be able to actually get fluorescence of the fluorescent of this plate, if it's a fluorescent plate. And if you put an object in between the tube and the plate, you should be able to project an image. And that's how regular X-ray tubes work. <clears throat> much more sophisticated, of course, with much higher energies but uh, we're, we're getting pretty soft x-rays at 20 kilo, kilo electron volts. Typical x-ray machines produce x-rays in the order of 80 to 150 kilo electron volts. So you've got a lot more energy for better contrast resolution. So this is the best way to make x-rays. And then the x-rays come off the tube around 90 degrees, probably better at this angle. And what I've done, I initially had some chicken wings taped to the back of this. And I tried to x-ray those and I'll show you those. And then I've now put a bottle of water there. The back of this screen, which is the, which is the green um, floor, the back of this screen um, has got this dark sponge material on it. And so I've been positioning the camera in the front of the screen like that and trying to focus it on the screen. This is how you get the green fluorescent screen out of the Cassette, you simply open it up and you've got two screens. You've got, you've got a screen here behind this purple uh, plastic. I'll show you it to you. Take it off. You've got a screen there and you've got another screen right here. And this was actually glued on. I had to rip it off. It was glued onto these little pads here. So I just kind of tore it off. So there, that's how you get your green screen out of your cassette. I've been standing at some distance behind this SUV. I still get radiation exposure here, but it's much less, uh, mostly from scatter off the, off the roof, ceiling, underneath the SUV and off the walls. So here I'll show you the scatter I'm getting. Picking up the fair amount. .141 millirems per hour. 
even at this distance, behind the SUV. So you can see that's a fair bit of radiation. So if I was standing right in front of that experiment, I'd be getting some fairly serious doses of radiation. So you definitely can't do this near to the, and, and stand right next to it. That was a pretty nice x-ray of that bottle of water. Now, I'm gonna try some of these chicken wings. They're kind of frozen and iced up, but hopefully I should get a reasonable x-ray. Well, let's check it out and see what, what happens. The water worked really well though. As you can see here, the bones are fit showing up actually not bad. Uh, there's not much contrast between bone and soft tissues because this setup generates soft x-rays um, as opposed to hard x-rays, which would tend to show the bone a lot better. But anyway, it's not bad. Well, thanks for checking by this channel and exploring homemade x-rays with me. I'm glad it worked so that you could see some of these, these results. Thank you for checking by and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe.